Chief Johnson, Malik Rashid, man, and our esteemed, esteemed guests, Samir Hernandez. You there. LA Zone. LA Zone. LA Zone. LA Zone. There we go. There we go. <laughs> What's good, man? man? Everything is good. Happy to be here. Honored to be here. You know what I mean? Been I'm glad. No, I'm no, glad. We're honored because, yeah. first of all, you're so esteemed in the class of production and <laughs> film and television. So to come sit with these guys, man, it, as we're trying to make our climb up there is, is just special, man. So we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day yeah. to come sit with us. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm ready to get into it, let's man. I'm go. ready to oh, let's go. be a man, part of bring the Oscar with you? Is it in your pocket? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I wasn't going to bring Emmy, though. I was going to just put it up right here. You know what I mean? Light flex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, man. Yeah. Um, tell us about young Samir. Um, you're dreaming. You're dreaming. What, what, what are the early dreams? Because I know also you hooped. Yeah, yeah, of course. Tell us about that, the community that, that, that encouraged you, that nurtured everything. Yeah. Like, what, tell us about Young Samir. No, nah, for sure, man. Young Samir, South Central Los Angeles, 51st and Normandy, man. <laughs> you know, we grew up in, a, I'm, a, I'm a 90s baby, born in the 80s, but you know, we, we 90s, you know what I mean? Yeah. Grew up in a, in a, in a very interesting time in, in the city. Um, but man, you know, was able to hoop, man. That's that's what I wanted to be when I grew up, man. I, from from the time I saw Shaq in '92, you know, what I'm saying dancing, dancing on the court, doing that Omega stomp. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, man, this is that. That's who I wanted to be. Okay. Uh, you know, I stopped at six seven. I didn't get to be, you know, seven one three hundred. But <laughs> but that that kind of started that basketball bug, man. And for me, that was like that was like what I saw as like my opportunity to be able to like see the world. Right. And that kind of started me on my path to be able to see the world, right? So we started started hooping at 12, and you know I was I was lucky enough to be a part of some of the most amazing teams, if not like the best teams to ever come out of California. Um, you like know, that's a, that's saying a lot. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't say it lightly. You know what I mean? I know, I know what it that's is. That's saying a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah who no. was on your squad? Where did you go to school? And who was on the, your squad? I'm, I, the, the the team I'm talking about was the uh, the Dominguez Dons uh, with uh, Tyson Ooh. went there, Ooh. Um, but you know I'm you know I always tell people we got we got a picture, and this picture I got to find it for y'all. It's when we win the state championship and on you know we got the players in the middle we got you know Tyson we got a few pros, um, Steve Moore who's now coaching we got a, you know a great group of people Bobby Keon who's now like considered like the gatekeeper for Los Angeles basketball Darius who played in the NFL for a minute. Um, but the cool thing is, on one side you got like a like a twelve year old Brandon Jennings, and then you on the other side you got like a twelve year old Richard Sherman being the ball boys. You know what I mean? And both of those guys ended up going to Dominguez, which kind of continued to carry on the legacy. You know what I'm saying? And so being able to go to school in Compton, um, being able to be really a, a a child of the city, man, was just was just amazing. And so you know when I when I grew up, like Dominguez and and being playing basketball, that was my way to be able to see like the country. You know what I'm saying? Because that took us everywhere from like New York to Philly to, you know, to Delaware to obviously Vegas. Everybody was hooping in Vegas and everywhere in between playing on that and being able to see something outside of what, you know, we was used to. Um, but that like that opened up my eyes to a bunch, man. I always thought I was going to be an NBA player, but, you know, God had different plans. And, you know, no, so you, you mentioned a great team, but I remember the teams with Tayshawn Prince. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Kenny Bruner, yeah. the Tommy Prince teams. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Jason the, Thomas. Jason Thomas who yeah. also was an all American quarterback. Yeah, he was the best two sport athlete when he was coming out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like a young uh, yeah, younger a, a, a newer version of State's yeah. Bozeman. Yeah. Did you say Kenny Bruner? You say Kenny Bruner? Yeah, of course. Kenny Bruner, Kenny Kenny Bruner. was yeah, a dog, on. man. That, that was, Georgetown yeah. Kenny? Yeah, man. Yeah, come that, on. That was and then he went to Fresno State, right? Then he went to Fresno State. Okay. And then he went to N one. He was bad Santa, I believe it was. Bad Santa. Yeah, he was bad Santa. Yeah, man. That that was that was a legacy, man. I used to be dope because like when I was there, Tayshawn used to come back, right? And Tayshawn used to come hoop and we seen this dude, you know, he was a year before me, so we never got to play together. But you see this guy. That's Coming back, you know what I'm saying, from Kentucky, and it's just like, you know, you, you damn near looking at Michael Jordan, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Same thing like when I used to play, uh, when we used to play AAU basketball and BD, used to come back, I know you guys had BD on. Yeah. BD, come on, man, he might as well be Magic Johnson, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He'll come back and play, but that, that really showed the power 
in the legacy of LA, right? Because it's yeah. not just about you winning, it's about like not only when you get on, really going back to show people what's possible, right? And to show people that like, yo, you can come back and you could be the next generation of what we're doing. Because, you know, being a part of this, this city, it's all about legacy, man, and continue to keep it on. So, you know, we just try to do our part to be able to, you know, not only put on for who we are, put on for our family, put on for our city, but also for the young dudes who's coming, the young men and women who are coming coming behind us to be able to get them that opportunity too. Yeah, and, and growing up in the city during that time, right, such a volatile, you know, time mm -hmm. growing up, and I'm sure the juxtaposition was crazy, like between AAU and then school and then home neighborhood life. Like, for how sure. did you, for sure. how do you stay focused and balanced as a kid going yeah. through all that? Because there's so much outside influence and I'm sure you got cousins or best friends who were prying to hoop probably too, but also like foot, yeah, you know, no, and the other sure. stuff. So, so how do you, how were you able to stay, you know, focused on, on that? Man, you know, I was actually, I was, I was, I was at a dinner the other day with a few folks and um, we were talking about like gun control and, you know, being able to come together as a community, as people who have a little bit of a platform to try to make changes, right? Because a lot of this stuff is handled from up top when it comes to government agencies and things of that nature. Um, and then I, while I was talking, I, 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 I and this is kind of heavy, but I, you don't really consider when you're growing up, but it was like before I turned 16, I had four people on my block, literally on my block, who had been killed, you know what I'm saying, the gun violence, and none of them gang banged. Like my first kiss, she was killed at a drive-by when she was 13 years old, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and the reason why I'm here is, is really because of my parents, right? My parents were, you know, they, they, they made sure, and I, I was, you know, blessed enough to, to be able to have both of them in the house to keep me out the streets. And then when it, when, you know, it was finally time for me to get it, be able to get into other activities, they were like, yo, this basketball thing is what you're going to do. Like my other brothers were in like the arts, which is actually funny because I'm not technically in like the arts. Right? <laughs> right. And that was never like my, in my, in my purview. Um, but you know, it was my parents that really held it down. And then the people in the family that, that, that they brought around and, you know, that, that was a part of who we were that really came in and kept us together. And then, you you know, as you do that, then your family extends because you're with, you know, different people that hoop and different people that play. And, you know, all your focus is on the same thing. And if you ain't on that trying to be the best, then it's like, you know, you almost lose your spot in that basketball community. But, man, it all starts with my parents. And then it, then it goes down to, like, you know, all my friends who was like mine trying to be the best basketball players and best people possible, you know what I mean, to be able to make it to, you know, make it to the league. Yeah, and his parents, right? Like, you know, I think we're all fathers here. Well, I know we're all fathers here. Yeah. What, what were your parents like? What was that dynamic, you know, growing up? And, um, you know, how did that, watching, watching them and what they've been through help navigate also to you? Maybe not even at that time, but now you as a father yeah. You know, what are some of those things that you you can reference back now? I'm like, damn, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a, a thousand percent. I mean, it's, it's like your presence. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, you know, you can't replicate being there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, my, I was, you know, I was lucky enough to have my, my mom and dad drop me off and pick me up every day from school. That's you know beautiful. what I'm saying? Be, have my mom be at everything that I did for you know, school play or whatever that may have been, like being able to do all that fun stuff, like, and those are the things that I take away now, right? I, I'm lucky, I'm blessed to have a, a great family, great wife, two kids, and that's the same piece. It's like, yo, you know, where can I make sure that I'm there, right? Make sure that, you know, I tell my kids that they matter, right? And be able to speak life into those guys and let them know that, you know, you could do whatever you put your mind to, like, what's your dream? You want to be the next, you know, the, right now my son wants to be the next superhero, right? He wants to be Spider-Man. I'm like, man, you, you could be Spider-Man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you don't become Spider-Man, you know what I'm saying, you, you could work at, you know, the, the Gazette or wherever you work, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you can do, you know, whatever it is that you, that you want to do. And I think that, like, that with our youth, like, half of these things is about speaking life into them. Yeah, half absolutely. of these things is about, like, showing them what's possible. Like, I, you know, I take my son, I still have friends who play in the league, and I'm like, all right, cool. Like my son, I, he he lasted to the second quarter. I thank God he lasted to the second quarter. But like, you know, I'm taking him down. I'm putting him onto the court, and you know, he don't know what's going on. But it's exposing him yeah. to different things that are outside of you know, outside of what you see day to day, and outside of what other people may see. You know, what yeah. I mean, I don't know where you guys are from, 
But where I'm from, I had a dude across the street who had never been to the beach. You know what I'm saying? He was in high school. Yeah. And we lived 15 minutes from the beach, 20 yeah. minutes from the beach. You know what I mean? And so, like, you know, you, you, the, the dope thing that, that you really realize is that the more that you see, the more that you see is possible. Yeah. And so being able to show our, show our kids and, you know, my kids at an early age and even, you know, working backwards and working to the schools we came from, things of that nature, showing them what's possible, then they'll click. You know what I'm saying? That it, that it, that's a world bigger than our block, bigger than our neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Bigger than our hood. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's how that's that that's a big thing that my folks taught me. Yeah, I love that, man. It's important to expose them. I'm the same way with, with our, we're the same way with our daughters. It's like traveling, exposing yeah. her different cultures and music and all those things. So as she gets older, she has an appreciation and she has more of a perspective, right? Because yeah. everything is perspective, and if your perspective is extremely narrow that can guide like you know some of the paths you go down so you, you see you seen that meme it's like yo i take my daughter out so so your your dusty trip to miami <laughs> yeah <laughs> your, your trip to miami <laughs> that's ain't gonna be yeah, serious yeah, that's yeah, super yeah, serious yeah, yeah, that's real um going back to move forward basketball right who were you know obviously Shaq. who were some of the other players that you really either try to mirror your game after or just love watching growing up that like you know, continue to feel that passion. No, a thousand percent, man. I mean, Shaq, Shaq was a man. Shaq is like my sports hero. Like it don't. Really? You know, oh, no question. Really? No question. Okay. Yeah, like hard That's stop. It's not even like no competition. Damn. You know what I mean? Like Shaq is the reason why I started playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, cause I was a big goofy kid. And so like, you know, when Shaq came on, you was either big and mean or like big and goofy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? There wasn't really no big and like, yeah. I don't want to use the word swaggy, but you know what I'm saying? Not wasn't, back then. wasn't yeah. no style. So Shaq came in and did that. I was like, ah, oh, well, here, here's kind of my lane. You know what I'm saying? I'm like a six foot 11 year old, six foot 11 year old. I was like, oh, okay, I could be Shaq. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but then, you know, and then Kobe came. You know what I mean? And Kobe was like, oh, man, this, this, this is the dopest dude in LA. You know what I mean? Um, so love, love Kobe, man. Love Kobe. And then, you know, as you grow up, it's like, you know, you watching the KGs. Um, you know, you in LA, and so you see dudes like Q Rich. Mm -hmm. You know, you watching BD. You know what I mean? And you just you watching players that have made it, and then you you know you're seeing like all right, you see how people move, and then you see like you know how their how their game is changing and what they're assimilating to, right? You watch, you know, Tayshawn go from like you know literally one of the best players in the country to you to to UK being like all right, cool, we kind of point forward and going to the league, and now he's like changing his game and he's like, yo, he's a defensive specialist and, and, but, but on the best team in the world. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, that's kind of showing you, you know, how people can change and how people can assimilate and how people could grow. And, and also really what it takes to be able to, you know, matriculate through these different levels of, of, of professionalism, right. Finding your role. You got to find your role. You got to find, you you find your role. Right. Cause you know, you see a lot of people that come in and like, you know, they don't want to be, they want to be the superstar. They want to be the man. They can't do nothing else and they don't make it, right? Because, you know, the league is like, I mean, you know what the league is, right? It's like, yo, yeah. not everybody going to get 20 points. So who going who gonna to shoot the threes? Who going to guard? Who going to be the rebounder? You know what I'm saying? Who going to set the picks, right? Like, yeah. and that's, that's kind of, you know, that, that's some of the things that we learned. It's like, yo, and even transitioning to film, it's like, hey, all right, if you want to matriculate through this thing, you got to find your role. You got to find your space and be able to do a good job and be able to roll with the folks that that, you know, roll with the team to be able to make a great product. And at the end of the day, be able to win. And so those are like lessons like, you know, how to win and how to be great and how to be a professional. Like those are lessons that carried on with me and helped me be successful where I'm at now. Yeah. It's just like, you know, those are lessons that can never be taken for granted. Yeah, now that's real, because I think a lot of people have a trouble identifying what their role is mm -hmm. and being comfortable in that role. Yeah. And, and I think once you can identify that, like, hey, I might not be good at this, but you know, I'm going to kill you when it comes yeah, to this. Exactly. You know? And then the, the importance of a team, right? You know what I mean? Then you know how to execute. And that's why even with basketball, when you watch certain teams, you're like, yeah, they may not be the flashiest or they may not be like have the, the most amount of stars, but the execution yeah. and all the players, even referencing that Detroit team, mm -hmm. you looked at them on paper, you wouldn't be like, yo, these dudes is going to kill us. But everybody knew their role. Everybody, they knew that just the chemistry yeah. was on another level. And, you know, identifying that early, you know, is, is something that's super important and I think needs to be emphasized more. And it doesn't mean that you're a failure if you can't 
shine in a certain area, it just means like that might not be every, you know, you know again, like you said, it's identifying your role. Mm -hmm. um, you can stay on a team. You can have a long tenure in the league if you identify like, hey, you know, look, D D Derek Fisher, mm -hmm. um, not to say he's, you know, not a good player, but I'm just saying in terms of skill set, if you put that against Kyrie Irving, you're like Kyrie Irving, yeah. Derek. But Derek Fisher had a long career because, yo, I'm a good guy in the locker room. Yep. I know how to teach guys how to be professional. You know what I'm saying? I'm dependable. I'm accountable. Um, Cause what do they say? Ninety percent of it is being able to be on the court for your teammates, right? Mm -hmm. All of those different things, <clears throat> where you have far more exceptionally talented people, but careers are a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You look at guys again who have those. You be like, damn, this motherfucker's still playing year sixteen, mm -hmm. and not a star. Yeah. But yo, still I need I checks. need him in the locker room. Yeah, I was uh, I was in Miami a couple of months ago, and they retired Udonis Haslam's jersey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what did he play in Miami? 21, 22 seasons, mm -hmm. one team. Yeah, you know what I mean. You don't think that there was times where you know he could have got a little bit more money or this or that. Mm -hmm. But again, he was like, you know what? This is where I want to be. I want to learn from Pat Riley. You know what I'm saying? I want to learn how to be an executive. I love my city. I'm from Miami. Mm -hmm. So again, it's it's finding um, things within the scope, right? Yeah. Of of what you what you want to do, your your art, and being like, you know what? This is what I'm good at. I'm gonna focus on this, and this is going to take me everywhere that I want mm -hmm. and need to go, mm -hmm. and desire to go. You know what I mean? So. To Chief's point, to your point, yeah, it's it's identifying those things early. Yeah. So did you did you play in college? Like what's the Yeah, I played small school, man. You know what okay. I'm saying? I said I played I thought I was nice. I actually actually <laughs> no, no, I thought I was good. I didn't think I was nice. I thought I was good. And then like like the world was like, nah dog, you know, that that you're like, hey, basketball ain't your path, man. You know what I mean? And so like I ended up I had I had a choice where I was like, all right, either I'm gonna go to like a prep school or a JC or like these last little teams that are recruiting me and I didn't want to go. I was like, yo, I got the grades. I don't want to do another year of high school, right? That's not my path. Okay. And I don't want to do JC because okay. like I got the grades. So I was like, yo, I went to a super small school, um, which actually took me on like, like a professional trajectory that like, I didn't even see coming, right? And so played at a small NAIA school. What school? A school called, a school you never heard of. If you heard of it, I'll give you $20 right now. Okay. Hope International. Never. Me neither. You know where it's at? No. It's in Orange County. Shut oh, up. Damn, uh, 45 minutes away. I never heard of it growing up. 45 minutes. And, but that's where we ended up going because that's, for me, that was such a pivotal time, actually, because it was like, it was literally a, a decision that was made in like the 11th hour. Mm. But it took me on a path, like one, from a faith-based perspective that set me on a trajectory to really start my professional career. So I played two years in college. I played one year there and I actually ended up going to junior college. Okay. Um, but after that, I, I made a very clear decision of if I wanted to continue to chase this hoop dream um, or like start my professional, my like my actual professional life, right? And so um, I decided to stop hooping and then I started, I got a job, man. I worked at a bank and it was like the, the least sexiest thing that I didn't even think was possible. I didn't know how to write a check. I didn't know how to, I didn't know what a loan was. I didn't know what a credit card was. I don't even think I had a bank account. I may have a bank account. Um, but then, yeah, I started working at a bank, man. And I did that for eight years. Started as a teller and ended up as a VP in community banking. Um, but learned a lot. Didn't like a lot of it, but learned, learned a ton because it taught me how to be a professional, right? Yeah. And, it, and it actually, like, you know, you go from being, you know, when you play sports, you could be rough around the edges. You know what I mean? You could cuss a dude out and, like, you know, Fuck, you then just get into home and be cussing and shit. But you could like get into <laughs> you'll be, you know, but and then it goes to like, all right, no, you're in a corporate setting. Yeah. Right. And and how you win is it has a different um, you know, winning <laughs> is the same, but how you win is different when, you know, you're a big old black dude and you're the only big old black dude <laughs> and you're from South Central and now you're in Orange County. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you I said yeah. you probably know, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so and so, you know, but we did that for eight years, man. It was 
it was a lot of winning. It was a lot of learning. It was a lot of like, you know, teaching and, you know, really grounding myself as a man. And then, you know, we did that for, for eight years and, you know, then we switched to, to, to Jumpman, man. We went to Jordan and that was like, you know, that, that's when we took it up. You know what I mean? Now, how did, how did that trend, how did that, what, what led from the VP of community banking to being a Jumpman? Um, <clears throat> man. So, you know, I hoop, right? So a lot of my homies hoop. And so one of my, one of my good friends who was my teammate at Dominguez is Tyson Chandler. Okay. And, you know, we would hang out a lot. And when, I, when we were in high school, they had these things called reps. If you ever seen Air, you know what I'm saying? You know the world. So like an Air, the dude who plays, uh, you know, what, what Sonny was doing, what H yeah. was doing, yeah, all yeah. that fun stuff. So we used to have our own reps in high school. And I was like, man, when I get done playing basketball, I want to do that. And so, you know, when I was hanging out with Tyson, I was able to meet a lot of these guys, uh, Wayne Pinckney, um, Nico, um, a lot of those guys. I was like, hey, man, do you guys, do you guys hire outside? And I just kind of just shot my shot. Um, one day when I was in New York, they're like, yo, you know, we, we, we do hire outside because I wanted to be in Nike basketball. <coughs> it's like, yo, Nike basketball doesn't have something, but Jordan has something. The only thing is you got to move, Portland. you got to move now to Portland. You had to move to New York. Yeah. And I, I never wanted to leave LA. I was like, I'm never leaving LA. But I, but I was like, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? It's New York. My man was playing for the Knicks. So I was like, yo, let's do it. And so we went, we went down that path, man. And, and you know, through, through a lot of interviews and through a lot of faith, um, you know what I mean, putting our best foot forward. Literally the day that I was gonna go and quit, the day that I went to quit my job, because I just kind of, I, I reached enough, was the day that they offered me the role to go and uh, take the job at, at Jordan. And so that's, that kind of took me on that, that path. And that was, you know, that was amazing, man. It's all, you know, got all God's, God's plan. And I'm very big in my faith and believing in that. Yeah, when, um, you had mentioned, I was going to say, you had mentioned about your faith and that being a pivotal part when you went to that school. What was it before you went to that school and then what shifted in you, you know, to, you know, that new installed, you know, love for the word or whatever it was? Yeah, no, you know? a thousand percent. No, it was, you know, you know what's funny is because you, you talk about, you know, we talk about community, right, and how much our community influences us. And so going to that school, that was kind of like the first time that I was actually away from my basketball community. Cause all my homies who was good, they was going to Arizona, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They was going to Syracuse, they was going to all these other leagues, they was going to all these different places. Um, and you know, UCLA, and like, I was like, you know, I was like the only one. Everybody's out there doing their thing, like, you know, getting their, and I was like, all right, I have to find a new community, right? And a lot of people who were on my team didn't quite look like me. And so like the people who embraced me, and the people, well, I say embraced me, but the people who I gravitated to, ended up going to a church out there called Friendship. Um, and I just and I just inherently started going. And then like, that's the community that I became around. And then that's when like my, my own personal faith journey began to grow and my relationship began to grow. And that kind of, <coughs> you know, it, it, it becomes like a blessing because it kind of focused me and it kept me from doing like the things that, you know, typically you do when you're 20 that kind of distracts you, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's like going out and stuff like that. I was like very, I was like working church, you know what I mean? But it, wow. it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was wild. It wasn't wild, it was, it was a much different time, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Um, and that ended up becoming like, you know, a very big part of the foundation of who I was and really allowed me to focus on my work, really focus on like really getting around other professionals. Cause that was the only thing that actually gave me the, uh, you know, let's call it um, the courage to mm -hmm. stop playing basketball because basketball was who I was. Yeah. But then you were able to see other young folks, young professionals and older professionals that, that, you know, when you're in the hood, you don't necessarily see that because everybody's kind of surviving, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you see like, yo, these are these young sex, these folks who are like salespeople and, you know, lawyers and all that stuff. I'm like, oh man, this, this is possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you mean you didn't, you didn't gang bang? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like that, that showed me what, what was possible. And for me, that's what like gave me the courage to go, okay, I could step out, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And take, and take, a, take a little bit of a leap. And so like, you know, to this day, all of my like all the decisions that I make, all the things that happen, gives me a uh, it gives me a like a, a being leveled in terms of like the ups and downs of my career and my yeah. life because you know I know kind of who holds like the keys to my life and and that's something that I believe in like wholeheartedly. Yeah, I love that man. I think hearing about being even around other people who don't just identify you is like the homie that hoops. 
Like, yeah. oh, you ain't hooping no more? Because that could also be a blow right to our egos when, you know, if you don't have, like, the shiny job or you're a rapper and and maybe the career doesn't go where you want it to go and people yeah. still run, like, oh, he's a fell rapper, you know what I mean? So being around, like, people that have a fresh perspective of you as a person, yeah. right? And also willing to pour into you to just see you do better without no, you know, initiatives or any of those things, man. Um, but I, I think that's so important, man, because, I mean, we've all been through, like, tons of dark times, right? But if you don't have that North Star, and I'm the same way, like, my faith is, like, what has been able to keep me, like, go through any of the tough times that I've been through is, like, having that, that moment where I'm like, okay, let me, I can slow this down because I know what my foundation is. Um, so that's, that's beautiful to hear, man. Um, so now you're in New York. I'm in the city. Yeah, big Jordan. City. Ooh, where was you at? Brooklyn. Big city. I was. I was uptown. I was uptown. Okay. I spent, Harlem. I, yeah. I spent, I spent my first year. I had sticker shock, dog, because I was like, I remember going and I was like, yo, man, here's my budget, right? I, I can give me a cool <laughs> spot for like three stacks, like, right? And I remember, I remember that real estate agent laughing at me. I was like, I was offended. I was like, what you mean? What you mean? I can't find an apartment for three thousand dollars? Like in Orange County, you could find an apartment, like a one bedroom something. And I remember going, man, I was like, yo, dog, I can't even fit a queen mattress in this room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I ended up uh, I ended up actually going to Jersey for one year and I was like, yo, no, nah, this ain't it. And I moved uptown, man. I was in Harlem and Harlem was Harlem was great. I stayed there for six years, man. It was dope. So we we was uptown and man, we was, you know, I lived a I lived a very fun life yeah, in New York. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. New York was great, man. Great friends, great people, great experiences. Do you know Jason Maiden? I know Jay May, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, a thousand okay. percent. I was, yeah, 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 yeah. Jay, me and Jay, like, while while he was at Jordan, we kind of like, I think probably right before he left, like was right when I came, but then we reconnected just, you know what I mean, just being around, you know what I mean? And he's back. He's back, yeah, he's, he's a chief design yeah, or something? Yeah, chief of design, yeah, structural. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah, a real, yeah, yeah. yeah no, he got no, a real, Jay, Jay May yeah. gonna be a, he's gonna be a huge add to what Jordan is, because not only does he bring like one, you know, Jordan is such a legacy brand, right? Yeah. And and being able to have the continuity of leadership from like, you know, when Larry first started this thing with H, you know, up until kind of like a couple changes of leadership and now Sarah Mintz is there. But to be able to still keep that same original DNA is gonna be huge, right? He has so much taste and so much passion for the brand. That's something that he ain't ever lost, right? But then also having his eye on, you know, what's happening with technology, right? Yeah. What's happening in the industry. Um, you know, obviously what's happening with design and, you know, doing all that fun stuff, it's going to, it's a huge add to what they're doing and it's going to kind of continue to keep their, their growth trajectory on the front mm -hmm. and being able to like, you know, do, do amazing things, man. Like being a part of that Jordan history is something that I'm like, you know, super proud of. And so seeing Jay May go back and, you know, a couple of my other friends over there. I just like, shot him a great. text the other day. Yeah, I just yeah, shot him yeah. a text. I know he's busy. I know they got him busy. Yo, you man. know he you know nuts. And then he, he had, um. He had a he was curating um, Complex Con in Hong Kong. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Thing. But so that so now you're at Jordan yeah. brand. You're in Harlem. Yeah, Jordan. You living that that life. How yeah. do we get to filmmaking? A dog, I, man, man. I don't know. <laughs> Oh uh, <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. yeah. You went from hoops to banking to uh, Jordan to to films, man. That's my my fourth life. That's one of the things I'm like, you know, I live four lives, man. But um, I, I I'll tell you exactly what happened, man. With me and Jordan, I never, I don't, like, I ain't never really watched TV like that. I watch hoop. Like I was like, yo, this is kind of like my zone. I love basketball. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wasn't really a big like film watcher. Like I was like, I like Marvel movies because I collected comic books as a like a nerdy kid growing up. Um, but then. You know, when we parted ways, I had this year where I was like, yo, I'm gonna go either, I'm either gonna be a manager or I'm gonna be an agent. You know what I mean? But I know what I'm not gonna do is go back to corporate America, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so while we were doing it, it was kind of like my, my year of yes. So I'm like, all right, here, here's these opportunities being able to figure out who, it, who I wanna be and how I wanna be able to do that and what the opportunities that are out there. And so, you know, while, while I'm doing it, I get a call from a buddy of mine. You guys know Jerron, Jerron Smith? Jerron's a good know. guy to have on, have on your pod. Okay. And so, a buddy of mine, Jerron, who we, 
Samir says you should be on the pod. There we go. There we go, Jerron. We're going to have you on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> there we go. You see, you know, he's, Jerron did, so me and Jerron worked together uh, at Jordan. He was at Jordan. <clears> he <throat> built, like, the hangar and then he the White House, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's my man. And so um, he gets a call. He calls me out the blue one day. He goes, yo, these guys are looking to be able to add an EP to the Stephon Marbury film, who my boys Cootie and Chike, mm -hmm. they made that film, right? Legend. Yeah, those, those are my guys. They're actually the reason why I'm here now. Like, they're a huge reason why I'm here now. And I'm like, all right, cool. They need to, they need to put an EP on this film. I know some people. You know, all right, cool. I'm going to do it. Can you tell me what an EP is? <laughs> and so, like, that's literally how this thing started. Like, I didn't, I, I knew zero, right? I just knew I knew people from, you know, just from having relationships. And, you know, and that was kind of like, that was, that was literally how, how it started. And so, you know, I, I hit up Rich Kleiman uh, and KD, and I was like, yo, we got this amazing film on Stephon Marbury. And if you know anything about Rich, Rich is like the biggest Knicks fan that you're ever going to meet. You know what I'm saying? And, and he was like, and, and he's also a person who, you know, to, to his, like, to, to his strength is he's looking for new opportunities to continue to grow, continue to work with people. Like, I love Rich. He works with the homie Busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich is, Rich is great, too. You know, Busy manages Dougie and is a part of Travis's. Well, I, yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he started in, he started in music. He has a, he has a great story. Um, and so we ended up bringing on Rich and, Rich and KD to be, uh, EP, to EP, uh, Kid from Coney Island. Wow. And so that was literally how I entered into the, into the field. So I literally knew, I went from knowing like zero to like, all right, let me kind of pick that up. And so we, you know, we had great success. Um, and then from there, you know, it went from, you know, all right, let's help, you know, it ended up being Slam Magazine and their, their, their production arm, um, being able to help set them up, brought on Cootie and Chike to be able to help to build their initial slate. Um, and then while that was happening, you know, a buddy of mine, um, Trayvon Free, he was like, hey man, I have the script, cause, so, you know, take a, Trayvon with the Dominguez too, right. um, he's my teammate. And so, taking a step back, when, when I was trying to figure out, like, how this thing worked, I was on the phone with Cootie and Chike, and I was on the phone with my man Trey, I was like, yo, can you tell me how this production thing works? And so they were literally teaching me on the fly, and I was learning, I was having calls sounding stupid, I'll be like, all right, I'll figure out more, you know what I'm saying, as we go along. That's one thing I know I'll be able to, once I learned how to write a check, I was like, all right, I can figure out anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so, um, and so what ends up happening is, like, you know, Trey brings a script, he like, you know, we're kind of like in the middle of Black Lives Matter and all this, all, all these crazy things are happening, and Trey's like, hey, I want to be able to use my talent, rather than just kind of posting on Twitter and, you know, taking pictures and things of that nature. And he goes, hey, I have this script, and how can you, like, can you help me be able to you know, bring this to life? Like, we, we need to be able to find the financing for it. Everybody's stuck in a house, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, it's funny because everybody tried to pitch it. It was like, yo, you know, everybody's, everybody's saying no, they don't want to pick it up, they don't believe in it. And I'm like, yo, dog, I believe in you. You poured into me, I already know the work that you do. Like, everybody was kind of already like circling around it. You know, Jesse Williams, he had an original song from Jill Scott. Uh, one of the guys from The Roots was doing the score. Like, I think he was getting Joey committed to it. And it was like, yo, dude, this is something that needs to be done. It's something that needs to be made. It's something that the culture needs to see. And so, you know, we went, to, we went back to Kevin, you know, Kevin and Rich, and, and they were like, yo, we're in. We believe in it. We believe in the moment, right? And they, they brought in some money. Uh, went to Mike Conley, and Mike Conley was like, yo, I believe in it. Mike Conley and, and his uh, business partner, Tim Jordan, um, they're like, yo, we believe in this thing. And it was like, you know, Hey, we'll, we'll be able to bring in money. Went to Jordan Schultz, um, who's the who's the who's the uh, right now. He's a, a sports a sports talk sports talk uh, personality. Yeah. Um, and Jordan was like, "Yo, I believe in this. You know what I mean?" And we I put some money into it, and we were able to, you know, definitely pull pull money independently to be able to create two different strangers, man. And that was, you know, being able to work with Trey, Lawrence Bender, Nick May, Van Lathan, and those guys to be able to bring this thing to life was one of the, you know, it was a very pivotal pivotal yeah. part, you know what I'm saying? And, and then that was like, you know, phase one, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and we were able to find good success and, and also more importantly, bridge gaps, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's what it was about. I don't want to, great story, but I don't, I want people mm -hmm. to understand, I think it's important that you, you know, you produced this Oscar winning film. Yeah, we won an Oscar, yeah. And 
the the sort of the the culture of the film. The film was about star Joey Badass. If you, if you could tell people yeah. like more about the film. No, a thousand percent, man. Um, you know, we we're in the middle of Black Lives Matter, and and like this was one of the most powerful scripts that I ever read, right? Because it told it told the story of you know a young black man's plight to be able to really navigate, you know navigate the world in a place where, you know, you're literally seen as a threat, like no matter what you do. And, you know, Joey Badass did an amazing job, you know what I mean? He, he, he obviously put in an Oscar, Oscar-worthy performance, yeah. um, along with Zaria um, and, that, and that whole crew and that whole cast. And, you know, it was, it was a piece where, like, I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, man, that shit it moved me to tears, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah you know, you see yourself in it, right? And then, mm. you know, you see the youth in it, you know what I mean? You see, you know, you see your kid in it, you know what I mean? And you see that so much work that needs to be done. And it was, it was being able to be a part of such a communal film that was brought together by so many people that wanted to be able to see a change yeah. um, was something that, you know, was something that I couldn't, ever imagined, right? That, that, wasn't, that wasn't in my cards. It wasn't something I expected. I mean, it was, it was amazing. I remember, uh, so like, when we went to the, uh, when, when it was the Oscars, it was like, it was like, you know, because we're still in a pandemic, we were only allowed, I think, four seats. So like, Trayvon and Martin, who were the directors, went, um, and they brought a guest or whatnot. And so, every, nobody was really bummed about it because what we ended up doing was we actually ended up running out of club on Sunset and we had a party where literally everybody who had a part in this came out. You know what I'm saying? And and so like it, it was hella ballsy when you kind of think about it because like <laughs> everybody watching it on on the screen, right? And everybody's like, "All right, dog, we about to win." Like you know what I mean? It's like it, it's kind of crazy because if we if we didn't win, but we did. And so we literally sitting there watching, man. And I never felt um, like. Like I never felt like I've I've been in like rooms when dudes win like championships and everybody's like the champagne is flowing and stuff like that, and so it's good to be able to see your homies in that. But I had never been a part of a team that was like that been that, that was doing that. And I and I, I I can show you the pictures now. It's like we we won and literally people were like crying. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't just a win for the film. It was literally a win for the community. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because of what it represented. You know, because of, you know, where we were in that zeitgeist and, and, and to a point still where we are to be able to say that we've really rallied like the, 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 the entertainment world around us to be able to acknowledge this film, like this little engine that could, yeah. that people said no to, that didn't get picked up for distribution until it was nominated for an Oscar and to be able to be acknowledged on the largest level at that point, like it, it's it was kind of one of those things that's like, you know, you never ever forget, right? Yeah. And it was one of those things for us that, you know, one of our most proudest, one of my most proudest moments to be able to, you know, win that Oscar. And, and, and that just, for us, it's like, yo, winning the Oscar was great, but bringing the people together and being able to, you know, show this to millions and millions of people to be able to see our plight, like that's even better, right? And people still remember and people still talk about it. You know, we're three years out. And, I think it's know. beautiful also because it was in short form. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you didn't have 90 minutes. You didn't yeah. have 120 minutes. You got what? For short form, it's got to be 15 and under, no, right? No, it's like, no, for short form is like 40, I think, 40 and under. Oh, is it 40? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 40 and under, something okay. like that. Like 42, something like that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so it's 28, it was 28 minutes. It was 28 minutes. To be able to like create yeah. such a powerful moment in that time, like you said, to the win is the win, but also the, the moment that it cut through so much noise yeah. and, and people paid attention to that. I yeah. think that's, that's beautiful and such an impactful thing. And one thing I just wanted to circle back on is the through line of the story so far is relationships. Yeah. From as you were a kid, from your basketball to you know, college to now you're transitioning into this to be able to pick up the phone mm -hmm. or somebody to pick up the phone and call you and open a door for you and give you opportunity. What's 
I want you to tell and just talk about the power of relationships and yeah. fostering those and, and maintaining those also too, because there's tons of people who know everybody, yeah. but that doesn't mean you maintain the relationship. So yeah. what, what does that mean to you, like these relationships and, and how have you been able to maintain them for, for so long? Yeah, man, I mean, relationships are everything, man. Any, anybody that says, um, like, I, I got here on my own, it's like, nah, dog, like that doesn't exist. Yeah. It's not. It does not exist. Like, everywhere along the line, somebody had to open up a door. You know, somebody had to, like, reach down and, and pick you up. You know what I'm saying? Somebody had to believe in you, take a chance on you. You know, at some point, at some point, somebody had to, had to, be, had to be covered for you. You know what I'm saying? When, when other, somebody had to, like, you know, there's always somebody that has to do something for you, like, period. Um... And, and knowing the power of a handshake and a hello, you know what I mean? And then finding commonalities with folks has always been something that I've always, you know, focused on. Even when I was a kid, it was just, you know, going out your way to say hi to somebody and not being too cool or anything like that, right? I was, I was always told and taught to treat, you know, treat, your, treat the, the person who, who may have a position that people aren't like thrilled about the same way as you would treat your CEO and the most powerful person, you know what I mean? And, and that's, that's something that I've always like held with me, right? To treat people as people, you know what I mean? My, my, one of my to mans, see them. To see them. To truly see them. To see them, them to yeah. see them. I, I do used to say, man, you gotta treat everybody on a human level. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what it's always been. Cause at the, you know, coming where, where I come from, like, you know, I had a cousin who was an addict, you know what I'm saying? I had an uncle who was a homeless dude. You know what I mean? I had, and, and, and the difference between them and, you know, my folks ain't nothing but a bad beat. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing but a bad hit, to be honest with you. And, and so, like, they could be, like, they, they could be in our position, but even, even so, like, I could be in their position. Mm -hmm. yeah. So who am I to be able to judge no matter where everybody's at? Because at the end of the day, you know, people are people. And, and that's kind of where I meet people first. And then, you know, also, it's, it's, it's really looking out, right? And not treating... Relationships is this kind of like predatory, what can, you know, transactional piece. Um, you know, we, we was talking about we it the other day. It's like, yo, dog, some of these things is, you know, 10, 15 years strong. You know what I'm saying? And some things come around, right? Like, I'm, I'm doing a film right now with some dudes, well, like, not dudes, these are like my brothers, who I was cool with when, before, when I was at the church. They just happened to be at the church, and now they're big time writers now. And now I'm like, yo, you know, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, man, let's come together, man. We got a TV show and we got a doctor's cut that's about to come out. You know what I'm saying? But it's all about maintaining those things and maintaining those relationships, man. Yeah. People be like, oh, politics, politics, man. Politics ain't nothing but elevated relationships. Because yeah. at the end of the day, who you work with, how you work with, and also how you connect with people, that's the most important piece. Like, you know, and, and, then, and then also the thing is, you know, who you see coming up, is, is typically going to be who you see as you descend, you know what I'm saying? Whether by, you know, whether, whether it's through, you know, hook or crook, you know what I'm saying? The people you see coming up are going to be people you see coming down. Or, or, or as you're up, you'll see them going like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how the world goes. And so, you know, people are everything. And listen, you can, you can build a very, very, very long career off of relationships and knowing how to nurture them and mm -hmm. position them and you know what I'm saying just yeah. be we know we we have a mute Wes yeah man the Come best on. the best the best there uh, is no, yeah. like there's no question yeah it's actually nobody of, even it's nobody, nobody even close. close yeah there's nobody even close relationship wise yeah. like it's not even yeah. And the way that he remembers everybody's name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. my, my daughter talks to me about that because she's like, you talk to everybody. Yeah. We'll be in an elevator somewhere. She's like, why are you going to talk to them? You know what I mean? Because yeah. you, one, you never know. But also, I feel uncomfortable people getting in the elevator and not speaking to each yeah. other or sitting on a plane and just because they're not family or I don't yeah. know them, they're not saying nothing to me and we got three hours to wherever yeah. we're going. A lot of things have happened literally because of a conversation that I've had in transit. Like, mm -hmm. I literally, we just recently closed a deal for a client, right? And the, the, part, the person who's the president of the company, 
I met his daughter on a plane 10 years ago. Yeah. The same guy just, you know, partnered with us on, on, yeah. a, on an artist. And it's like, he, he brought it up. He was like, you know, you remember you met my daughter, Chloe, on a plane wow. coming from da 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 da. And I was like, yes, coming from Nashville to LA. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's how it works, man. I mean, so you in the relationship business. You, oh, yeah, yeah big, yeah. big, super relate. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, we all, I mean, here's the thing. Every, no matter what, we all in a relationship business. Every day. You know what I'm we're saying? We're in the human condition business. That's what we're in. That's yeah. what we're in, man. And, and, and the moment, the moment you forget that, the moment you think that it's about you is the moment that, like, you will only be as good as your talent will take you, right? Like. Because people will be out to move you out of the way. Because they'll be like, yo, you're not, you're not about the whole thing you just you're about your thing yeah. you know what i mean and that's very easy to recognize exactly. in the midst of things so it's like it's also good to get called on those kind of things you 100%. know what i'm saying like if you have like real strong friends for them to say hey you got to be you got to be mindful of your behavior mm -hmm. i know you but other people don't know you mm -hmm. and if you're not mindful of this you're going to get put out of the room not because you're not talented not because you don't have a good heart but because just the way you're messaging yeah. is, yeah. you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you, you need, you also, that, that's another part of the relationship yeah. business. Because some of the hardest conversations, they can either make you, you know, depending on who you are, you can pivot or you can create an excuse or you can be like, yeah, I got to take that. Yeah. I got to take that. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. I'm going to get better. Yeah. It's yeah. growth. Yeah. It's growth. Yeah. That's real growth. You know what I mean? And then, and sometimes you're not looking at it as that. Sometimes you just were like, yeah. but yo, no, that's growth. And that growth will help you. Cause that, that's also a very endearing quality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be able to say, Hey, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. As much as you want to like stick out your chest when shit is going good and we rocking and all the shit is coming in. When you got to sit up at the podium and be like, hey, I threw two picks today. Yeah. And that potentially, that's why we lost the yeah. game. Yep. Yeah. It's all a part of it. You got you got to accept all of it. It's all par for the course. Yeah. You know, so, nah, man, great story. And then the garden, the garden, the, 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 the yo. Ah, 38th, the garden. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah. That's a real good yeah, one. Yeah. No, nah, all right. So, I, so I'll tell you this. So after we did. Uh, so after we did Two Distant Strangers, and while we were building, making another film with Rich and KD uh, called um, NYC Point Gods. Um, oh my shit. Yeah, that was, that was a good Sham one. God. Yeah. God, yeah. Sham God. Shout out my guy, Yeah, Sham I love Sham. God. Shout, out, shout out to Sham. Sham <laughs> Sham's an amazing human, man. That's my guy, He's got man. This, Did you see his Beamer that he got? Did you see yeah. the Beamer? Oh man, that's Cold. sick. That's Yo, cool. Mavericks. Right? He's one of the assistant coaches yep. for the Mavericks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always see him back there with the big yeah, beard. Yeah, oh, beer chilling. perfect. Beer perfect. He just perfect. lost like 60 pounds. Too. Yeah, man. He's been working. Word. Yeah, oh, yeah. Shout, yeah. Out to, shout out to Legend, man. Yeah, Sham, Sham Legend. Great dude, man. Great dude. Um, so, like, you know, so while, so while we doing, while we doing 30, so we doing 30 at the Garden after Two Distant Strangers, my man Trey go, yo, he sends me this deck. He's like, yo, can you get the Jeremy? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, uh, you know, he's like, I think this is the next one. We got, we got to do this, right? It's like kind of just a, it's a community based film, right? It's for the AAPI community. Kind of we're still in the middle of the zeitgeist that, that's happening with the anti Asian violence and things of that nature. And, um, you know, I, I looked at him, I'm like, yo, I, I think I can get the Jeremy. Um, but then I talked to the director, the person who I did, who really kind of came up with the, with the, with the concept. And Frank Chi, um, and he was like, you know, he told me a story. And when I heard the story from him, like, I never looked at Jeremy as this, you know, as this icon to the AAPI community. I was at those games, mm. you know, because Tyson was there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I, I literally, so, so the funny thing is, I went to the games because they were shitty. You know, can I cuss on this? Yeah, yeah okay, absolutely. Right. Yeah, they were shitty. Trash. <laughs> yeah, and and you know they was going through they was going through injuries. You know what I'm saying? It was like it was the uh, it was a lockout year. They were supposed to be nice, right? Because because it was it was Melo, Stat, and Tyson was like they like kind of like their big three. Mel was hurt. Stat was hurt, 
And like, you know, they just wasn't cooking. I think Raymond may have been hurt. I don't even know if Raymond was on that team. That's um, but it was bad. And so I remember like they had this dude and that, like they had Jeremy and like they would put him in and like he would kind of be like the only little like bright spot. He was on 10 day. And I just remember watching because I was there for like a week, right? I was on vacation. And I was, uh, I was like, man, they just need to put this dude in, right? Because they was like, they was bad. And then I was at the game when they was playing D. Will, and they put him in, and he just started cooking. And it went from being like, like the garden was dead. I don't know if y'all ever been to the garden to watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't, yeah, no, yeah. ain't no better place to watch a game at the garden when it's popping, and then they're gonna let you hear it also when they, when it's like, you know, you <laughs> feel it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's not just a quiet arena. It's like, ah, yeah. oh, you stink. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But then I was there, and so I was able to actually watch that thing happen from the first game, from actually before the first game. To, to, through the end, you know what I'm saying? That two week stretch, I was at all, I was at that 38 point game against the Lakers, being an LA dude, watching my homie play against the Lakers, watching this whole insanity thing happen, and watching this dude go ham and listening to this. And, and one thing that you they don't really talk about was like the city was like on fire, right? So like how the Knicks are now is like how it was then, right? Like New York is a Nick city. And so Absolutely. when like the Knicks are feeling good, it's like the it's city, the, the city is yeah. boom. It's just like the energy is. The news people pick it up. The newspapers pick it up. The cele- it's just like I was people there last talk. Week. Oh man, it's great, I right? Was there last week, oh, you I was, feel I, it. I was um, I was staying at the public hotel, and you know, which is in LES. Mm-hmm. and everybody walking around in the orange. And oh man, chest out, yo, dog. Chest yeah. out, like. Yo, we we in here. Oh, we in there. And, dog. and talking like I was at a what's that place called Blue Ribbon Chicken? Yeah, yeah Blue Ribbon's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. They was like, yo, we cooking everybody. Yeah. We gonna cook. Everybody. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. We cooking it, yeah. everybody. Yeah. And, yo, when the, like you said, when the city is on fire, oh dog, it's nothing like it's, it. It's it's nothing like it. And but so ahead, and so, up, but but up. I saw Jeremy through that lens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it, you definitely felt it. Oh, yeah, I felt it. I was like, I'm there. I, I remember what this felt like. Let's do it. But then when I, when I heard through Frank's lens, I was like, ah, I never thought of him as this hero in the AAPI community that showed everybody what was possible. Like, I never mm-hmm. thought about that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, man, this is a very, very intriguing entry point into this story. And so what we ended up doing was, you know, we, we, we took it out. We pitched it, right? We pitched it to two very big distributors. I ain't going to say who it was. <laughs> um, and, and they were like, nah, we, we, we not going to do it. We don't see it. Right. Um, one, one of these guys said later on, they said, well, we didn't do it because we already had our Asian film for the year. And I was like, damn, that's how y'all look at it. You know what I'm saying? Kind of a similar plight that what, you know, yeah. we're, that we, we're on currently, you know what I mean? We like black folks ain't the only people that go through these things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you work in these rooms that aren't necessarily designed for us, you know what I mean? Story for another day. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so so I was like, yo, let's do it. So we pitched it. They was like, nah, nah. And then we were like, yo, we could either do one of two things, right? We can either so go, all right, on to the next one. This isn't going to work. Or we can implement the same game plan that we put for, you know, two distant strangers and be able to talk to the people who this affects directly, right? And so I went to my man Dave Blue, who's an EP on the film. Actually, I went to my man Nan Wang, who is the, uh, the founder of Sleeper. So shout out to Sleeper. They probably need to come to y'all and be a sponsor. Um, and I was like, hey, man, I got this, uh, I got this. And actually, I met Nan through BD. Damn. Okay. Um, and I, and I, drove, I drove to Nan. Nan lived in San Diego at the time. And I was like, yo, um, I got this film. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about Jeremy Lin. And he's like, hey, this sounds very interesting. Let me introduce you to somebody. And he introduced me to Dave Blue. And then Dave, we talked to Dave. Didn't know Dave from a you know, can of paint. And Dave was like, yo, let me open up my syndicate to you. I'm like, ah. Dave who? <laughs> Dave Lou. He, he, okay. he runs a VC up, up, up north. Great, okay. great guy. Okay, okay. And he literally opened up his doors. The next day, we had like 30 emails to all like the top Asian tech folks um, within, within North America. And so, like, that's literally how we raised the money. Dude, I, I was on the phone with the, with the founder of Guitar Hero, the dude who made Guitar Hero. I'm like, oh, this is dope. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Uh, I was like, "Yo, what's your highest score, dog?" <laughs> <laughs> but like, but it was, it was, it was like, but and, and that's literally how we got it done, right? And this is, this is literally after we had to chase Jeremy for like six months because cousin was like, he had never talked about insanity from that day, like from the time that it ended up until he, ten years, he had never addressed it. And now, in sitting down with our interviews, was the first time that he had ever talked about his experience with insanity. 
Um, and so we were able to literally raise enough money to be able to get this thing shot and get a rough cut. And like we started shooting prior to even having a dollar in the bank. We had commitments and we were like, all right, Iman, what you doing tomorrow? We got we got the cameras and we pulled up on Iman and then we pulled up on, you know, Jenny Yang and then the money started coming in. And, you know, we just all put our put our heads together, man. And, and like it was it was another one of those films. I was literally, you know, for the community, by the community, for the AAPI community. But the most, you know, you know, one thing that I learned is that, you know, once people believe and see themselves authentically on screen and see what they're going through, like people will like circle, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we engaged a lot of the key stakeholders because that wasn't a film that just goes, yo, we made it as hard as it was like, man, it was folks from the Asian American Foundation, which is which is a, a huge organization with for for Asians in North America. And they wrapped their arms around it. Joy wrapped their arms around it. Joe Sai wrapped his arms around it. Um, you know, we talked to the guys at Gold House. They were super supportive of what we what we were doing. And so being able to take that from like literally this this deck to you know literally probably you know the the biggest <laughs> sports documentary of the year. I think I can safely yeah. say that. Um, you know, yeah, I, I've seen the numbers. I can safely say that. Mm -hmm. um, to being, you know, one of the highest performing pieces of pieces of content on HBO, it's, you know, you can make a documentary about like this this bottle of water, you know what I mean, and you know, the Dream Hotel and how they got it, but it's another thing to talk about like the city of people who, you know, who sacrificed and who literally have generations of people who make this through their plant that was once a da 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 and yeah. the impact that it has and where they're at now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just it's just a different take in terms of how we dive into the human story yeah. to be able to make it, you know, make it work. Um, you know, one of the challenges now in Hollywood, they're like, yo, we need big people, we need strip from the headlines. You know, that shit is stupid, man. Yeah. Like, yo, dog, like let's tell dope stories that's gonna galvanize folks and that people wanna see. So let's allow people to see themselves on camera in an authentic way. And, and that's what it's about. Question. So, because I know we got to, I want to, there's, there's three questions. Yeah, go you, for it. Well, actually, just three yeah, answers. First of all, you said the garden you felt was the best place to watch a game in the city. Is that, you know, we had the forum out here. Nothing compares. No question. The garden. The garden. The Mecca. Over the form. There's yeah. a reason they call it the Mecca, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no question. Okay. Not it's not close. And I've been I've been to I've been to probably about it's only like three teams I haven't been to. And I've been to the majority of the big ones during the biggest playoff moments, finals moments. Nothing compares to the garden. And the garden ain't been to the finals since the nineties. Yeah. So the garden is the best place to watch a game. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sinead O'Connor, nothing compares. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Um, your 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 top three. No. Yeah, five. Your top five players. Top five All players. Current. All time. Oh, favorites are like like ranked because those are different. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. You know what? Because yeah, we would be on that for. Let's go favorites. Top five Your favorites. favorites. Okay, my favorites. All right, I'll go. I mean, Shaq. That's so crazy to me, but yeah. Go I mean, and this is no particular order, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaq, Cole. You got, you have to put MJ in there. Um, Magic. You have to put Magic in there. Um, and and you know, I'm not a Bron hater. I mean, I think what Bron is doing is one of the most like. Bron Bron's at that point now where it's like, yo, you. You have to understand that, like, in our lifetime, we'll probably never see another person like him. Yeah. And as opposed to, like, picking apart this 40-year-old person who's been doing this shit for 21 years, I guess, like, yo, you need, I feel like this towards the end of Kobe's career. We, we have to appreciate this shit. Yeah. Because you're never going to see a savant like that in our lifetime. You know what I mean? Somebody else is going to come around, but. We won't be here for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got you to gotta appreciate that. That, that that's. It's insanity what he's doing. However you feel about all the other shit, what Braun is doing right now is it's never been done. Yeah. And right. top oh one more. top uh your top three films. No oh, shit. <laughs> Not ones that you've been a part of. <laughs> you want top three films? Just like films that you like. What's your top three? That I like? I'm gonna give you all Marvel films. I love Marvel films. Really? Uh, dude, I'm I'm like a 
Yo, anything sci-fi, like I'm like I'm a like a sci-fi like. So you're a Star Wars guy. Love Star Wars. I love J.J. Abrams stuff. I, I was looking at the Planet of the Apes the other day. Like, man, this is a good movie, man. I need to watch that. Yeah, I want to go see the Planet yeah. of the Apes. What about New Marvel, though? Do you feel like it's just... Yeah. You know. How do they get back? How do you get that back on track? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that, I mean, they have a lot of people that are paying a lot of money to be able to figure out those very big films. Um, but I think you got to get back to the simple. You know, it has to get back to, like, Simplified, like it, it just got too like complicated. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And and here here's the piece. Like you you really want to know how I think they should get it back together? Drop the X Men. Yeah, you got to drop the X Men. The X Men the X Men prior. Yeah, I mean you got to remember. I don't know if y'all read comic books. Yeah. But like the X Men was the number one property, and because of like their licensing deals before you know it became a thing, like you know Fox had X Men, and I mean and they did good for the time. But like now it's like, all right, cool. How, I don't know how much more you did, you know, Iron Man was a primary character in like the 60s, 70s, you know what I'm saying? Same with like Captain America. Then in the 90s, it was all the X-Men, right? You, you're not reaching, right? You, you, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so, so if you want to know like how to reset and make that shit dope, like they have to move up to X-Men. I heard Coogler's like in talks to be able to direct it, I think, but it's like, you, you got to, you got to drop the X-Men. I think of the Expedite now with the success of X-Men 97. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know if you watched that yet, but yeah. the writing on it is, like, really good. Really? And yeah, like, I was really blown away because I used to watch that growing up, and I was like, did they just, like, reboot same episode? Yeah. But I was like, but I agree. It's like telling they need to drop that one, and then there's so much rich history in Marvel comic books that dates back centuries right mm -hmm. um, and, and that, that opens up a whole right vault. It, dude like, come on dude you got you got so you got you got uh what, what, what's what's do bishop is in there like you know what i'm saying you got cable. Gang, you got cable cable man you know what i'm saying that, 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 that's what you got <laughs> that's what you gotta bring Y'all seen man. this is yeah, real comic saying? book shit right here i love that man that, that but that's that if you had that that's i think for me i would love to see that yeah because then you just you're not you're no longer like banking on characters that you know you was already reaching. I think you got great hits out of like amazing storytellers with James Gunn did with the Guardians of the Galaxy, but they weren't relevant. You know what I'm saying? Not to yeah. us growing up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if I think if you drop that and really reset the thing with well, around the X Men, man, shit. Out of here. Guardians yeah. was right. my shit though. Who's winning the finals this year? Oh shit. Man, dog, I, I got my uh, man. I, I I I root for my homies, man. So um, I'm going for the Wolves. I need Conley to get a ring. So like I'm going for the Wolves, and I do believe whoever wins, as long as everybody stays healthy, whoever wins that series is probably going to win the championship. So yeah, I'm going. I'm going for the Wolves. I think. I think it's going to be hard for them dropping two, like they did. Nah, man, I'm, I'm Wolves in six, man. They're going to pick up two. <laughs> yeah. I think you seeing. I, the only reason that I think that they have a shot is not just because of Ant Man. It is Conley. If yeah. Conley can be steady, the steady in force, you know what yeah. I mean? Then they have a shot. But like, they also, man, they need another. They need a. They need somebody else to score points. Cat needs to be consistent. Cat needs to be consistent. Like, I mean, I think that that's like answer number one. Your number two, who clearly is Cat, has to be a consistent number two, right? That's why they. That's why the Nuggets dropped the first two because Jamal Murray wasn't like. He wasn't the number two that he was. That he's turned. That he turned out to be the last two games. Yeah. So like, Cat has to be consistent. I think that that you know, you know, it, it's. I think that you know when you're up, it's easy to be great, right? It's yeah. when things get the tight. Adversity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you need to be able to step up, and and, and that's why you know that's why Ant Man is is a, such a great player because, no matter what, he wants the ball. You know what I'm saying? He's a lot like you know the greats in that. Like yo, it's time. It's go time. I think yeah. that's why there's such a big. Um, rallying around him right now yeah. is because we're looking at him and we're like, oh, you remind me of yeah. the era. Yeah. He's a, like, he's, he's, he's a killer. Yeah, he has the ability to be great. One thing I realized watching these games is Cat ain't got no post game. That's his, so that's his Achilles heel right now. Like, he don't it's have. It's not that he don't have one. He just would pr prefer to pull no, up and face up. I'm talking about when you get up. down there, right? Your footwork. 
That's why you got to go study with a king. You got to go yeah, study like summer. the footwork summer. is where it's at down there. You know what I mean? The like guys that, summer. Cause even look at Ant, right? He'll, he'll go in the post. He got pivots. He got the up and under. Yeah. He got a lot of, it ain't just barreling into somebody. Um, I mean, Kakaro, I mean, Kakaro. Kakaro, Kaka ball. He, yeah. he's a baller, but I think he gets in his head also too. And he forces things, but if, it's it's been a great series, man. It's it's been extremely. He's, he's from Denver. Yeah. I'm a I'm a Nuggets ah. fan, and uh, the pedigree of a champion. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. want to see the Nuggets in in Boston. The homie Derek White plays for the Celtics. That would be a I great think, series. You know, that would be a great uh, Celtics, series. Celtics, Celtics are coming out. Celtics are coming. That out. would that, that would be a you know? star series too. Like I think that's good for the league. Yeah, yeah the league's Jokic, in a good place. Tatum, I, I love these. Jalen yeah. Brown. Like, but but I think I think that the Wolves will get more more views because because Am. Man is the oh, biggest dope, star man. of the NBA. I love right that. Is he? He's the biggest star in the yeah, league right now, right? So. Yeah, but, I, I love yeah. his personality. Everything about that. Dude, but but here's the thing: don't don't sleep on whoever comes out of that OKC Dallas series. Like, dudes can hoop too. And on both of them. Yeah, they they could hoop. <laughs> yeah, they could hoop. You know what I'm saying? They could hoop. But I think whoever wins this Denver this yeah. Denver Minnesota series is going to win. But you know. Yeah. But my man Bismack played for uh, so if, if if Conley wins, then I'm going for OKC because my man Bismack. You know, or or Dallas, but anyway. But Where did Bismack I, go to school at? Bismack from Africa. I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you just you know him. That's mm -hmm. your guy. Mm -hmm. dope, 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 dope. You already know. Well, listen, man. It's been nothing short of a, of a pleasure. We appreciate you. Yeah. Of appreciate course, the, the honesty. You know what I mean? And appreciate the the just the knowledge shared today. And uh, continue to like find these amazing stories and that put us on. In, in such a great light and that inspire. And when I say us, I mean all of us, like you said, like let's find, continue to find the commonalities and uh, cause in everyone's space, there are amazing stories, amazing yeah. stories, right? So like uh, continue to do that and yeah, yeah man, let's, let's, you know, let's continue to build. And then um, before you go, if, if there's young filmmakers who wanna get Absolutely. in the industry who might not, be able to go to school like what are a couple tips or like things that they should explore to, to you know mm -hmm. kind of you know find out a little bit more about that side of things no for sure man I, I, w I wish I could give like a linear uh path to being able to do this but like my path is not linear I think that like the, the biggest thing and even when it comes to like what we were talking about earlier in terms of learning how to be learning how to fit in and being able to find a role right like if if I'm if I'm going from this thing and I want to be able to like enter into this space, um, like I'm I'm jumping in like I'm being a PA, right? A production assistant is what it's called. Mm -hmm. Like I'm starting at the lowest level to be able to learn my way up. If I'm a 20 year old, you know, whatever. Um, I think really jumping in. I think being able to consume as much as you can, um, not only from the production side but also from the business side and understanding how things work, right? You could Google how, how these projects work and how these deals work and, you know, the, the way in which the business works. Um, and I think also being able to tap into different folks who, you know, here, here's also the thing, in them credits, right? And it's a bunch of stuff that nobody knows what they do. You can look up one of those names now and, and shout out to like LinkedIn and Google and Instagram or whatever. You could literally find anybody on any of these credits who have helped to make this movie, right? And those people typically don't make one movie. They've made hundreds of movies, you know what I'm saying? But being able to like pick out those names, dog, and reach out and keep on reaching out because yeah, most people won't respond, but you may find one person who does, who does respond and who's willing to answer questions. He responds. So make okay. sure you nurture respond. your relationships. My guy. Spend more time on LinkedIn and Instagram. Yeah. A sweet life, Malik Rashid. Oh man, <laughs> yo man, it's, it feels good to be back. We'll we'll see y'all in a minute. All, All day. Right, peace. Peace. Peace.